What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin, and this is Erin On Demand, a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand, business, and impact. And y'all, I am so excited because today I'm talking all about how to increase your Instagram engagement. And I know Instagram is just one of those things that it just seems like so hard to crack the code on how to grow. It's like, I've been taking all these professional pictures and I've been posting frequently and I've been doing all the things that all the people say I should do, but I'm still just not seeing the growth. So I'm gonna share with you guys some things that help me increase my Instagram engagement and following. Now, I will admit this, Instagram has been one of those platforms that has been difficult for me to crack the code. I feel like I kind of came on YouTube and YouTube was my jam because I love video and I felt like I had a very clear direction with YouTube. But then Instagram, I just still felt like I didn't know exactly how I wanted to use my Instagram platform because it was just different. It has taken me some time to kind of figure out what the purpose of my Instagram is and kind of the things that I enjoy sharing on there. So um, I want to share with you from that perspective that even I have struggled with Instagram in terms of just kind of cracking the code. Now my first tip is to try to stand out on your feed more. Now I know that like in today's age, it is just so common to go on photo shoot for Instagram now because it's like, well, I got to get the quality down. I don't want to be posting on dingy picture on Instagram. But I just want you all to know that it's something very, 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 very important about just letting authenticity take over. And it's those moments that you're okay with sharing if you are... Uh, I remember my friend Tatiana, she loves to roller skate and she was roller skating and then she fell <laughs> and she actually posted it on her feed and it got so much engagement and I just think that it's so cool when people can actually share the real moments. She could have easily taken a super cute picture on her skates and said how she's trying this new hobby and you know no one would have ever known that she'd fallen. Just being authentic and sharing parts of yourself that you feel are unworthy of sharing. I'm not saying get too personal but making sure that authenticity is what is leading your Instagram. And honestly at this point like everyone's pictures are professional so I honestly feel like the things that stand out are the pictures that don't look so so crisp or so so professionally done or so super staged like that's actually starting to become less and less different now like that's pretty much the status quo so if you could bring something different to the table maybe try um putting time lapses on your feed, maybe do a fun boomerang on your feed instead of just in your stories, you know, trying out some different apps that maybe move the background or maybe create a cool video compilation or something that's just going to help to push your content to the next level. The next step in increasing your Instagram engagement is to create a social media strategy. Y'all, I have a full video on how to create a social media strategy, but a big way that I have increased my Instagram engagement is simply by planning my content. And for so long, I have just been like going with the flow, posting whenever, you know, kind of just, I would fall off track and I would get overwhelmed with what to post or when to post or if it was the right time to post or whatever. Um, and once I started planning and actually seeing, okay, Erin, this is actually the best time for you to post for your followers. That's when I really started to see some results. So this portion of the video is actually sponsored by Later and I have been using Later for a very long time. It is an incredible platform that I use to schedule my Instagram posts and I can schedule my stories, my posts. Um, and a lot of times, especially when I have sponsored content that has to go up on a specific day at a specific time, it keeps me right on track. Y'all, I have not found a scheduling platform that can compete with later. I'm telling you guys, it is the best of the best. And honestly, I can say all of these things because I actually use it. So later really has helped me 
streamline my social media strategy and also implement the strategy that I created because I know so many of us will create a strategy but then struggle with the app actual implementation so I use later to schedule all of my Instagram posts and even some of my Instagram stories and it just makes it manageable it makes social media marketing manageable and honestly that's the goal they have visual scheduling so you can actually see what your feed is gonna look like before the posts go live so you can kind of tweak where you want them to go if you want to curate a specific look which I know a lot of us like to do so you know it really helps with being able to see what's gonna be happening down the line in your feed they also have some really powerful analytics that they share so I'm gonna hop on my computer and show you how I actually use later all right so i am in later and i went into my media library and actually uploaded quite a few images that i plan to schedule for the next week or two and it's super easy you guys all you have to do is drag and drop it is like the best thing ever so once your images or video gets uploaded i like to go into my analytics now this is one of my absolute favorite parts about later is how much analytics and insights it shows you. So here are some pretty basic analytics, but you can go in and see uh, your best performing posts based on engagement. You can go and see um, your audience and what they're engaging with. But what I really like is this particular part where it shows your audience engagement in terms of how many of your followers are on at specific times. Now, this is great because it's going to help you figure out when is the best time to post based on when you have the most of your followers online. So clearly, um, Mondays around noon to three or four is a great time for me to post. The darker it is, the more people are online at a time. So around this midday range for me is the best time to post. But obviously you can, you know, when you sign up for later, you can see where the most uh, of your followers, what time they're mostly online. So this is gonna impact when you schedule your post. So that's very important. Um, and then you can also see your post performance. This is really, really helpful because I like to try new posts and particularly for this post, I tried something new. I did a little slideshow with some tweets in the middle. I'd never done this type of content before, but it did really, really well. And I love that later basically shows me like this was a hot post, girl. Um, you know, the engagement was really high based on their analytic, um, the way that they show their analytics. So visually, it's so it makes it so easy to see what is performing really well. And then you can you can search this for the past month or three months or however um, you want to you know, whatever timeline you want to show. So you can see like which of my posts are doing really, really well. How can I incorporate that more into my social media, my strategy? You can also see story performance and hashtag analytics, which could um, make a difference in which hashtags you're using on your actual post. So I like to look at this as well and kind of just see, you know, how many people have landed on my stuff from specific hashtags that I have used. And then they also give like the top hashtags in the industry, which is super helpful um, to get that traffic. So now that we know a bit about the analytics that Later provides, it is great to check that out before you start scheduling your content. So I'm going to go into the calendar and I have all of my media that I'm considering scheduling for this week. And what you can do is you can go in and these times where you want to drag your post, you can actually align them with the times that you have the most followers online. So it was around Mondays, around two that had one like 12 to two that had a high amount of people online um pretty much any of these midday times are great for me so i'm just gonna kind of scatter them a little bit and i'm gonna go into the preview mode so this part is really important for me because then i can do the quick scheduling so these blocks 
are what enable you to do the quick schedule. So I'm gonna go into preview and I'm actually gonna drag in the photos that I'm considering scheduling. So um, I'm gonna drag these in and you can rearrange them and see what your feed is going to look like. That is why I love this preview stage. So you can see how it's gonna look, you can curate your feed however the heck you want to, to make sure it looks exactly how you plan for it to look. So this looks looks pretty good for me I'm actually going to take this out and then I'm going to show you how it looks in the week now so oops I need to save save changes so you can see that they have been scheduled based on the times that I chose for the quick scheduling. Now, once the photos go into their designated time slot, you can click on them and make your caption. So once you've written your caption out, um, you can go in and you can do save captions where you can actually draft up your captions and then you can just import the designated caption to the post or you can use this to save hashtag groups. So I like to keep some hashtag groups copied into my notes, but it's a great idea to just put them in later if you're using it consistently. That way you can just have your hashtags right inside of later already saved. I'm gonna paste my hashtag group. So these are more of my productivity girl boss type of hashtags. So you can go in and save that and then you can just insert it into your caption. Now, what I like to do is I like to add the first comment. You do have to have the auto publish feature set in order to activate the at first comment, but I like to put my hashtags in the first comment so that they don't clog up the actual you know, post caption. So I will add the first comment and I can go into the save captions and insert those hashtags like that. And then I just push save. And once you save it, the posts will go live automatically. You will get a notification. You don't even have to worry about it. And this is really what is going to help you stay consistent, y'all. Later is the truth. You ain't got to worry about it right now. It's going to post for you later or whenever you schedule it. And it has truly been such a game changer in making sure that I am staying consistent and diligent with posting on Instagram because I know for most of us, it is a struggle. So let's go back to the camera. So I highly recommend that you try later. It is an incredible platform. I use it so much for my business and I really have seen the results of simply planning my social media and using the analytics and all of the information that later provides to help me grow faster. So if you're interested in trying later, you can use code Aaron 21 for one free month of the growth plan. I'm telling y'all at the very least, try it for a month. I promise you, once you try it, you're going to keep using it, but you have to be very diligent with actually planning time to schedule your social media posts as well. So I highly recommend it. Please use the promo code and all of the information is also in the description box. So thank you to Later for sponsoring this part of the video and let's go to the next tip. Number three is to be present in other aspects of Instagram. You have to go live, you guys. I'm telling you, go live. Even if only one person is tuned in, that's an opportunity for you to practice, to really mess up and no one will see you. So, you know, really try to go live as much as you can. It's even better if you can get on a live regimen where you go live once a week at a specific time. I'm not saying you have to do that right now, but if you can start off with going live randomly, getting adjusted to it, and then maybe start implementing some actual scheduled lives where you're letting your audience know, this is the live, this is what time I'm gonna be on, this is what we're gonna be talking about, going to be 30 minutes long. I'm going to take questions for 10 minutes and you know, it gives people the opportunity to schedule it into their own calendar. So when you go live at the same time, even every week, people know to expect that. Similarly to YouTube, you or a television show that you watch, like you know it's coming on every Monday at eight o'clock, okay? Bachelor, if you watch The Bachelor, you know. Um, but you know that it's coming on every Monday at eight o'clock you know, treat your lives the same way 
if you can. It's nothing wrong with popping in and out though. And I also want to uh, encourage you to, with your lives, you can pluck out some great bites from your live and use those as content as well. Keep the conversation going. So if you have a 10 minute live or a 30 minute live and there was a really great nugget of advice or content that you shared in there, you can pluck that out and pop it onto your feed and that can be a piece of content that lives on and starts up some conversation. Someone who's really great at doing this is Miley Teal. She has amazing lives. She's always sharing so much wisdom and she will pluck them out as what she calls a My Leak Minute. And so I encourage you to take advantage of going live, but then also repurpose that content to live on Instagram for a little bit longer. I mean, honestly, a lot of people don't just go back and watch a full live. So it makes it easier for them, you know, for your content to be viewed more if you go in and repurpose pieces of that live. Another area of Instagram that you should definitely be exploring in is Instagram Reels. These, everybody knows about Reels. They are super hot right now, but this is the time where it's really important to go ahead and take the leap and engage with these new things that Instagram is pushing out because they always more aggressively push them out. I hadn't done Reels very much, and then I did a few experimenting with them and they both got over a hundred thousand views so now i'm definitely taking reels more seriously and i just saw my followers go crazy during the time that those reels were being pushed so within like a few days they had a hundred thousand views on both of the reels that i had posted and i mean i was growing like over 200 300 followers a day so within a week, I think I grew like four or 5,000 followers, part when I talk about Reels. Now, when it comes to Reels, one thing that I wish I did in the Reels that got a lot of traction was provided a call to action, like like and follow for more tips or share this if you want more tips, something like that to lead more people to follow me. So, you know, making sure that you really go strong with your calls to action in everything, in your posts, um, in your reels, making sure that wherever it is that you want them to go after they consume this piece of content, you're telling them what to do. A lot of times people might like you, they might see you, and they might binge a whole bunch of your stuff and then they just don't follow you. Take the opportunity in all of your content to actually put a call to action so that people know where to go. A lot of people are going to do the action or take action if they really do resonate with your content. But there are still those random people who just don't. So make sure you have very clear calls to action. This definitely helps with engagement. There is a lot of power in trying out all of the different features on Instagram, including Instagram guides. So this is another great place for you to store information, almost like a blog style place that Instagram is infusing. Instagram is basically trying to cover all grounds, all right? They're trying to cover all grounds. So guides is gonna be great for information. If you are a service-based business, if you are someone who creates content that has a lot of valuable information, you can put different posts within one guide. You can add texts, you can put videos, you can add reels, um, and there can be just one place with lots of different pieces of content that create one larger piece of content. Really spread yourself out on Instagram. See what all they have to offer, but really try, when they do create new assets on the platform, experiment with them. Like literally just experiment with them. You do need to go through some sort of experimental phase. I always say this, like experiment, go live, post on your feed, post in your stories, talk to your stories, and then see how they're responding to it. That is really going to help you narrow in on what type of content is really working for my audience. What's really resonating with them. I see that I did this reel that gave some information. Okay, let me do some more reels like this. I just encourage you to make sure that you're listening to your audience when you are experimenting and making sure that your content is aligned with their needs as well. All right, capitalize on your captions. And I started growing.
on my Instagram by treating my captions almost like a micro blog where I was like sharing this story or lots of value or content in my captions. And I'm telling you, these captions would be super long. And it's nothing wrong with long captions. I think that was when I started to realize that long captions actually convert and they actually cause conversation and they actually spark awareness and engagement. So don't be scared to use longer captions. Now, I will say this. You don't always have to use a long caption and that's what I had to learn. You create a very long caption every time you post could be something that is holding you back from posting more frequently, which was definitely the case for me. So I had to start realizing, you know, Aaron, you just gotta have to post. Like, just post, you don't always have to have a 10 page long caption and um, start mixing in some other elements to create a more dynamic feel, you know, start mixing in, maybe it's not just all business, but you're sharing home tips and things, you know, like how you're decorating the house and how you're, you know, spending your weekends and, you know, just infusing more of that personal touch into my Instagram platform. So that way, you know, I don't feel the pressure of having to write this long caption that may take me 30 minutes to write up every time I post, which then pushes me back to not post as consistently. So just think about that when you are creating long captions, knowing that long captions do work, but also you don't always have to do them. And my next tip is that each piece of your content should be telling a story. Don't underestimate the power of beginning, middle, end. So in your Instagram stories, if you are talking about your favorite set of bed sheets, um, maybe you show yourself putting the sheets on, then you show yourself like making the bed. You say what material they're made of and how soft they are, how you're just such a hot sleeper and you sweat all the time at night. So these sheets are super airy, super breathable, and you tried them for a night or two and you haven't sweat anymore. Um, you know, that's how you tell a story. You add that personable touch in there and then you give your call to action if you want people to use your link to buy the sheets. Whatever it is that you're trying to market, make sure that there is a story around it so that people feel some type of connection to it. They're not buying the sheets because the sheets only cost $30. They're buying the sheets because they might be a hot sleeper too, and they trust the fact that you are promoting something that has solved a problem for you and would potentially solve a problem for them too if they purchase it. So um, making sure that storytelling really wraps around all of your content, whether it's your captions, your Instagram stories, your Instagram reels, they're all uh, they all touch on providing value, but they also provide an emotional value, whether that's humor, whether that's, um, you know, just getting someone more emotionally invested in you. Please, please, please use text on your Instagram stories. Like, do not make Instagram stories and there's just a whole bunch of slides of you talking with no text on it. Give text on almost every screen. I notice when I put text on the screen that I get so much more engagement and people are way more likely to keep watching because they're able to read and it's engaging more senses. So making sure that you aren't just skimping on your stories, you're actually really engaged and involved. I also noticed that it helps with engagement when you actually talk to your stories, not just posting pictures or boomerangs or you know things that just don't add up to a full story. On the days where I do my Instagram story and I don't reshare a whole bunch of stuff and I'm not, you know, like posting random stuff, but I actually have a cohesive story of my day or a story of me cutting a pineapple. And like that story probably was one of my most iconic Instagram stories of us literally trying a new pineapple cutter that we bought. That's literally amazing. That's not the point. The point is, is that when you can show a beginning, middle and end, no matter where it is, people are invested. So make sure that your Instagram stories have text on screen and they also include you talking to the camera, but also they include other elements that compile into one story. Try not to overshare a whole bunch of 
shares or reshares in your Instagram stories. So these are the tips that really have helped me grow on Instagram outside of just overall figuring out what direction I wanted to take my Instagram in. What I really want to do on Instagram is build a more personable connection with my audience. I love showing like my home updates. Um, I've grown to really enjoy um, creating Instagram reels. And I also really like creating uh, shareable swipe posts that really give a lot of information. So those are things that I've been incorporating into my social media strategy for Instagram this year, as well as going live frequently. So that's something that we're going to be rolling out, you know, live series and all of those types of things. So try stuff, you guys. I'm telling you, try stuff. I hope this video was helpful. In the comments, what is the most challenging thing about Instagram to you? Because I know it's just... It's just one of them things that I just feel like it's so hard to crack. So let me know what's the most challenging part of Instagram for you. And I forgot to leave y'all with this one little tip, but this is a bonus, is to have a platform that can pour into your Instagram. So do cross promotion, y'all. If you have a YouTube channel, that's your main content platform. Pour those followers into Instagram. Give them an incentive to follow you there. Tell them you post more day-to-day -day updates, or you share a lot of your home updates on Instagram, if that's something that they're interested in, or you're gonna go live about this lesson in depth, so they should follow you on Instagram for that. You have to give them an incentive to go over there, because a lot of times people are just comfortable where they are. It's not that they don't like you, it's just that they haven't taken the time to take action and actually follow you over there. So use multiple platforms to your advantage. Okay, y'all, I'm done, bye. <laughs>